Okay, this is the cart motor. This is the new setup. Some of you may have seen it as the test rig, which is now, um, we'll have that new motor here and eight 44 amp hour batteries. Um, and it'll all be mounted to this one rig. So, if you're curious how I'm getting power, this is how. These are made poly, polypropylene, I think, AC capacitors, 12 microfarads, and there's six of them across the phase. So, this would be three phase here. And these are wired six on each one. And then these are electrolytic capacitors tied with the DC. And the, the, new, the negative is tied to the bus and the positives are tied together. Don't ask me why, but this works perfect. 320 microfarads a piece one for each phase with the positives tied together and then these are 12 microfarads and there's six of those across the three phases coming out of the motor now I'm doing some experimenting with improving the timing but right now that is my best uh, setup so we're using a pulse motor to drive a polyphase generator that is basically an induction generator. I wanted to throw this in um, just for your own benefits if any of you are planning on rebuilding one of these motors. This motor here had these old style cloth wires on it and if you take any of these old 1940s, 50s or 60s motors apart you might have ran into this wrapping that's brittle it falls apart and then it's a dead short to the casing which is the why most of these motors end up in the junk anyway so what I did here is the wrappings that were like this I used a um, shrink wrap gun you could use a, a hair dryer if you wanted you heat this up and it becomes pliable and what I did is I replaced all these wires with uh, new plastic coated wires ran them to the base of the coils and then sealed them with silicone and wrapped them with tape so that we don't have this problem of them shorting out because they're brittle and I'm going to be using and rewiring this motor in numerous ways and I don't want to have to deal with that cloth based old style wire so if you if you rewire one of these and you do this you want to solder the connections wrap them and then use some kind of silicone rubber base material to seal them up and to lock them into place because basically if you look this whole motor been coated and you know you're talking about a lot of high current and you don't want to mess with a dead short believe me so the silicone will seal this up and make it immobile so you don't have to worry about the connections breaking so that's just a little tip remove all that grease so there's not a speck of that viscous heavy grease that you know, somebody call some people call it 90 weight. It's gear grease, right? These big motors, they didn't care if uh, it added a little drag. You know, it's a 440 motor, uh, so it's driving a. This is a three horsepower motor, so if it can't overcome that, then then you have a lot more serious problems than worrying about the grease. But in this application, uh, if you clean this out real good and you seal this up with a, a sealant like a silicone sealant and then fill that up um, 
probably about right there with uh, machine oil. Um, that works great, no problems. Um, you will have some leakage because there is no seal on the inside of this. So you'll have some leakage out here, so you'll have to keep an eye on it. And uh, if I was doing this for permanent use, I would basically press fit these coil, uh, bearings off of here and remake this piece here to include a seal. But for these experiments, it's not really necessary. So, but um, these these roller bearings are a lot more efficient than these little AC induction motors. They have no bearings. They're sitting on a felt type. Uh, material and uh, with a steel retaining clip on the ends and it adds drag. It's just something to consider if you're thinking of converting one of these old three-phase motors into an induction generator. 25 inches. With 24, with 22 magnets uh, the wheel is two inches thick. Each one of these marks the magnet. This is a stainless steel cover. So it is contained right underneath this. There's a spacer and a magnet. And I did that to keep the magnet from shooting out the side. So basically it's just a, a stainless steel 316 wrap around two inches of particle board it's screwed together with a spacer and then put in with these screws to hold it into place this is temporary this is will be if it works this will be cast in plastic because this is wood and uh, it's 30 pounds in wood I can imagine making it out of steel um, yet. So I'll be making a mold and casting this in plastic.